give everybody a minute to uh, get on here. We are coming to you live from Moab, Utah, where uh, everybody loves to go Jeep and you know, it's a, it's a great place. We've had some really good weather, a little bit of clouds rolled in. Um, you can see behind me um, the rim trail, Poison Spider Mesa. So, um, you know, we, we just, we've been on the trail all day long. Um, we took the fast route back to uh, be able to make this broadcast. Um, everybody else is still back there uh, wheeling off, fortunately. With the Terramoto, we can go a little faster than the average uh, Jeep. And um, yeah, we, we've been having a good time. I actually drove half the day and I've got Jordan here with me and he drove the other half of the day. Um, I can tell you that um, I just had, you guys probably saw, um, I, I had pulled the 3.0 Foxes off and I had them serviced. I hadn't had them serviced in ever. And uh, man, are they working good. I'm, I'm super stoked with how uh, good the dampening is. It, it just brought back uh, to mind how good this stuff is working. And uh, because we were gonna be going faster, I cranked up the knobs and uh, we just started hauling on the way back. So that was kind of fun. Um, the, of course, the uh, Mickey Thompson Baja bosses gripped the terrain just incredible um, as if we were on the street, you know, just amazing. So um, anyways, if, uh, if you missed it, we're here in Mo Moab, Utah, and uh, we're here with uh, Rockstar Garage, and we're here for the Great American Crawl. If you haven't heard of that, there's a Facebook page for it, and uh, later this week, we're going to be doing a whole bunch of runs um, with the public. And uh, the, the last couple of days we've been doing some media stuff, capturing um, some images and whatnot that we wanted to get here where we never had time and certainly we weren't here for uh, East Jeep Safari this year. So it was a great opportunity for us to get over here and get some of that stuff. Of course, all of the uh, Rockstar Garage Jeeps are also outfitted with Genrite. So that makes it really easy for us to get everything that we're out here looking for. So kind of a nice opportunity. Um, how are we doing on questions? You want to mention anybody or? Uh, no questions yet. No? Um... I, I, but guys, uh, guys and gals, um, thanks for joining me. Fire away. I'm, I'm just kind of uh, talking. Of, of course, it's uh, November 3rd, election day, Tuesday, and uh, we're here with you guys straight live from Moab, Utah. Pretty cool. The weather has been phenomenal. We couldn't have asked for better. We, we understand by Saturday there's going to be snow. So it, it's been getting cold here at night. Um, I think this morning was 37. So it, it was pretty chilly. The old Terramoto didn't want to warm up this morning. So uh, yeah, good stuff. And uh, like I said, I've got uh, Alex is here behind the camera. Jordan's here with me. Val's here. Um, Val's still out on the trail on her way back. She was riding with... Uh, mischief maker so they'll holly she'll be back in a little while um, and we are just having a great time we're we're going to talk to you guys for our normal block of time and then we're going to go get some dinner because we've been on the trail all day long and uh, we are hungry so um, how's everybody doing out there fire away some questions we um, just to give you an idea we were all the way in um, if you've ever been here at the far point of the Poison Spider Mesa Trail, and we got all the way off the trail in less than 30 minutes. So, um, for uh, what normally takes all day long, um, it can be done uh, much quicker and without beating up the vehicle. So, we uh, we had a good time doing that. We, you know, it's Tuesday, right? Um, coming into the winter, there's nobody here. We we've literally got the trails to ourselves. We saw a couple mountain bikers this morning, and that was it. So uh, that's that's been really nice. We wheeled yesterday with uh, Danny Grimes. A lot of you would know of him as Grandpa of Grandpa's Garage. He's also right here in Moab. We usually throw a, a party over at his house, and uh, we got to hang out with him yesterday. That was kind of fun. He's doing well. Um, yeah, just uh, having a good time. We're here all week, like I said because uh, I think it's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are the Great American Crawl Runs. 
So we already saw some people showing up for it, and uh, it's going to be going to be good. I think we've got some great trails planned to run, including Pritchett. So um, it's going to be pretty fun. So. All right. Um, <laughs> Joe Shulman would like you to share the steering assembly on the Terramoto. Okay. So. Um, talking about like the quick release, is that what? Mm. Um, we can we can kind of do it all, right? So. Um, I'm, I'm running one of our quick release steering wheel kits. So um, you pull this back and it slides on and you always give it a little tug to make sure that it's actually on there. And then uh, that runs through um, some chromoly rods into, um, I've got a high performance steering box. Um, this one's an AGR and uh, they, they built this one. This is the one that I raced KOH with and uh, I've been really happy with these. Of course, it's ported for a RAM, so I've got my RAM assist down here, and um, yeah, the Pitman arms right here, so you can see how the, the track bar is way back here, way back here, drag link, tie rod, everything's matched, all equal length, no bump steer, really works good. Um, if, if he's looking for something else more specific, just let me know, but um, yeah. And then of course I've got uh, my roller bearing here that um, keeps the tie rod from bending. So if you happen to catch it, it uh, doesn't let it flex up very much so it won't stay bent. So that's that's kind of a nice feature. And those are available on our website as well. Um, of course up front, I've got the Vision X lights. And um, you know, I don't know that we ever showed everybody uh, how I hooked up the blinkers on that. So that's kind of a nice feature. I'll do the other side. And then, of course, those are regular driving lights, which um, I think is really cool that you can have all those features built into one and uh yeah that's that you know really i started um using these for the jl guys because they're losing their blinkers and stuff so that's a really nice uh, feature for those guys that i wanted to show you mike phillips asked why no t twisted pitman arm so on the that's a very good question and, and if you're not familiar with the jk a JK has a reverse pitman arm. So the pitman arm actually sticks forward instead of backwards like it does on a CJ, YJ, TJ, LJ. So um, yeah, this one sticks forward. And what we did was we designed this suspension so that um, we actually crouch back down here. Alex. So we designed the suspension so that it operates within the range of this high misalignment heim. So you can see how this is, that's fairly flat right now. So um, it gives it a lot of travel going down. We've got a uh, high misalignment heim on the other end and uh, we stay uh, within that range so that it can't be damaged. And uh, that works really good. And then this is a, a bigger um, three quarter inch bolt on both ends. So um, that, that really makes it beefy. And again, guys, this is all like, I haven't touched anything under here after racing King of the Hammer. So this is all the same stuff. And uh, you're, you're looking at it, you know, the way that it's been for years and years and years. We've talked about this before, too. The torque seal that you can see. Um, I've got it all over the place. That, that's how we know if something's come loose. So um, we use that torque seal. What else? Uh, Mike Malosh, I've been shopping the Genrite website for rims. Is seven inches approximate the standard width? Uh, no, eight is actually the normal width. Um, and a lot of the times it'll turn into eight and a half or sometimes even nine, depending on the manufacturer. So race line kind of talks in between eight and a half and nine. Uh, KMC is more of an eight and a half. Um, so these are eight and a halves. And this is a 1350 tire. And then I, I'm running five inch backspace on these. So a lot of the, the confusion comes when it comes to the backspace. So you really want to make sure you get the right backspace in um, so that you have as little scrub rate as we've talked about this many times. And uh, 
used quite a bit of that no scrub radius on the trail today. What else you got? Uh, Pamela Spear wants to know if you have a build sheet you can share. On the Terramoto? So, actually, I, I've got good news for you. Um, over on our website, if you go to the gallery section, so um, the, on the home page, there's a blue bar right on the website. You'll see galleries. Click on that, and you can select uh, the Terramoto or JK's, and the Terramoto is located within there. When you click on that, it has a bunch of pictures and a complete list of every single part that's on this vehicle so uh, makes it super easy all of those that list is hyperlinked so you can go right to the products and see what they cost like the whole thing so um, that should satisfy uh, what you're looking for all right that's it so far so huh? far wow do we have a lot of our regulars do we have kelly and uh, uh let's see miss weber miss weber's on weber. Uh, Nana's on, Terry Mode's on. Nice. nice. Uh, Summer Ann says see you all Thursday. Okay, good, good. That would be mm -hmm. awesome. So um, keep firing the questions, guys. Um, we uh, we had, I don't know, how many vehicles did we have today? Was that like 10, 12? It was quite a few. About 10, I think. And yesterday was 20. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we've had quite a few. And uh, really, like I said, great weather. We're um, just having a good time and uh, really testing out a lot of the uh, equipment. It was great that Jordan got to drive most of the day today and uh, just watching him go through, pick lines. Um, you know, I haven't been in the passenger seat in the Terramoto in a long time and uh, that power really feels good from the, the passenger seat. So um, handled great. We were able to whip through a bunch of the turns and stuff and you can see you know, the beautiful sunset tonight. It's uh, absolutely awesome out here. So, um, yeah, pretty pretty darn nice out here in uh, Moab. So, if you've never been, you need to get it on your list and make it a priority to get here. It is really cool. Alex has been here a couple times with me now. And uh, there's plenty to see, great restaurants, lots of good wheeling, mountain biking, climbing, like whatever, whatever your thing is. And then, of course, you've got arches, uh, National Park over on this side and uh, Canyon Lands at the other end um, and nearby uh, Zion and Bryce also so um, yeah it's uh, the Colorado River is running that's what cut that canyon right there so it runs right through here and down the canyon so um, you know beautiful area to be in and uh, very very athletic and outdoorsy you know Utah really welcomes outdoor recreation which is Kind of refreshing. So. All right, uh, Terry Runyon using Dana Ultimate 60s with JKU Elite suspension. I believe 69 inch, good, bad. I think you set the curries up at 70 inches, correct? We do. So um, you'll have to choose a little bit different offset wheel. So you'll probably have to go with like a four inch backspace wheel, something right in that range. Otherwise, um, when you articulate, your, your tire is going to touch the shocks. And um, that's, a, that's an important thing because um, it's the, the tire gets really, really close in here. So you just want to make sure you've got enough room to um, back that off, which is going to be done with the offset of the wheels. The other thing you're going to have to be careful of is in the front that uh, it's the, with the up travel. So um, you're just going to have to make sure that everything clears up inside there because that's why we use that rolled back cover so the the rolled back cover you know really pushes this back away the steering box is right here right so so i'm able to now travel up behind the steering box and uh that that package is really nice so you're just gonna have to be super careful on that and come up with something creative in terms of a bridge in order to make that work okay what else uh... we got? Terry Mode, any news on 42s from Mickey Thompson? Um, yes. In fact, um, it's it's all good. They they had to purchase some new equipment, and um, it's going into production. You know, uh, this year with COVID, I, I don't know if a lot of you know this, but the, the you know international SEMA show was canceled, uh, which is normally happening right now, and uh, a lot of business within. Automotive industry is, is done during that time. 
So um, a lot of the, the factories like Mickey Thompson are retooling right now and uh, trying to chase some of these more popular sizes that, that we've been asking for. So yeah, good news on that. And, and uh, trust me, I'll have the first set and you guys will know right away because I'll have them on the next live when I've got them. So. All right, uh, Joshua Noaser running KOH again. Uh, boy, has that been a popular question lately. I, I think I've been asked that three or four times every day for I don't know how many weeks now. Um, probably not. Um, I'm really trying to support Jordan this year. Um, I love racing. I, you know, of course, um, would love to do it. And, uh, you know, we had such a great race this last February in the Terramoto that, um, we, we've talked about doing it again. Um, I've still got all the safety stuff is still in there, so it's ready to rip whenever. Um, I am going to be helping a couple of customers who built Terramoto replicas or clones. So um, yeah, it's I'll be there and I'm going to be you know supporting uh, Jordan and, and the other guys. So um, but you never know. You you can sign up right at the last minute and, and go on race day. So. Thanks for asking. Uh, Pamela Spear, can you rent a rig out there? If so, any recommendations? Out here? Uh, yes. Um, Outlaw. Outlaw Adventure. I, Jeep Adventures, that's what it was. Um, does a really good job. Uh, the owner's name is Jeremy over there. They've got a bunch of Jeeps that are in, in a variety of different configurations. JKs, JLs. And um, I drove a JL yesterday all day on the trail. And uh, that was that was pretty interesting. There there was a lot of little things about it that I was like, whoa, I'm not used to that, and not used to that. So um, yeah, just because um, my jail has been under construction since the day I bought it. You know, we drove it straight from the dealer to the shop, ripped it apart. So I never even got to drive it. So um, yeah. Uh, a couple people asking for updates on the TJ Aluminum Dash. Yes, in fact, um, I know that we got everything the guys were putting it together. Um, we, you know, we, we got all the parts laser cut. And we, we've got some welding to do on some pieces. And uh, I'll check on that uh, tomorrow morning and see if somebody there can send me some pictures. I, I know um, it's probably enough where Jeff could fit it up on his and, and we could send you guys some pictures and at least show you what we got so uh, but yeah it's it's coming along and it looks really good so yep. uh, that's it again for now so um, the other part of the update you know as you guys saw last week um, Jordan and I were out at the hammers uh, shock tuning and testing his car he got a solid 350 miles in and uh, that is just awesome that the car is doing so well so he's in the process of tearing that down now. Um, and when I say tear it down, I mean everything. Like the, the engine gets taken apart, the transmission, the everything comes off, gets inspected, uh, put back together, and uh, ready for race day. So um, yeah, we've got, we got a lot um, going on. We're, as soon as we're done here, we'll be headed straight back. And uh, we've got a lot going on. We've also, uh, for those of you watching, turkey run out at uh, Johnson Valley is our next thing we've got going on so um, you're welcome to join us for that that is also on the blue bar of our website under company you can sign up for that and uh, let us know you're coming we are doing a big turkey dinner out there and uh, it's a potluck style so if you want to bring a dish that's welcome as well so a lot of good stuff and uh, certainly welcome to join us for that as well as our uh, Christmas crawl which I think is pretty close to being full, but the sign up is also under the company on our website in that blue bar. So check that out too. Uh, will the aluminum dash work with the center console? It will. That's a great question. Um, we were thinking ahead on that. We, we knew at some point we wanted to do that dash, and we knew the center console had to work with it. So um, it looks great, it works good, and um, yeah, it's. it's perfect mate and I, I think I've posted a couple of pictures but I can I can send some 
you know, in a reply to this live and, and kind of give you guys a sneak peek of what that looks like. So, um, yeah. A couple of people asking for an update on Growler. So I saw Jamie had the whole rear section, you know, where we cut it and extended it um, into an LJ. He, we did that in all aluminum. So it's all new high inner fender wells and floor. Uh, looks awesome. Um, I can also post a picture of that. It really he has awesome. one on his, oh, that he, he's he posted did? already. Okay, so on his Facebook. I think so. Okay. Or so one of the we'll, social media platforms. So we'll, we'll figure out a way to send the link over to that. But yeah, it's it's coming along really well. Um, I think he was, he was having the heads done on the engine that they're getting ported and then uh, we're putting a a new comp cams cam and some lifters and rockers and you know some high performance stuff so that's going to be really cool and uh, that thing's going to sound good it'll, it'll live up to its growler rowdy name for sure so uh john miller after field tuning the shocks are they dynoed to see what they where they'd end up no um the the field tuning um is gets us right where you know jordan really likes the car um, then what we'll do is after he's all done with it, in fact, here, here comes Jordan, why don't you come over on this <laughs> But why don't you describe, uh, they were just asking if um, when we were done with shock tuning, do you take them off and dyno them so we know where it's at? Uh, no. In short terms, no. We make, we make our own notes, you know, of uh, you know, where all the bypass tubes are set at. Um, we don't physically take the shocks apart and, you know, write down all the valving and stuff. We leave Posh to do that. Um, you know, we send them in for a rebuild, you know. They'll get fresh oil. They'll get fresh the oil. Stuff. They're yeah. not going to take anything apart. You know, they're not going to change the shim stacks or anything. So the, as far as the valving goes, that's going to stay exactly the same as, um, as, as when they came off the car, you know. Yes. Um, but... You know, something that we've had happen is the bypass tubes are not adjusted exactly the same. So that's why we take our notes, make sure everything's exactly the same as when they came off. Um, you know, most of the time they are, but we've yes. had them to where there's, you know, one or two clicks off. But. Yeah. And then uh, race week, you will read, you'll do a final retune. Yes. 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 When the yeah. car is really the way it will be on race Yeah. Week. So race week, guys, you know, there's... There's always more possibilities of us saying, oh, let's let's make sure we get this on the car. You know, there will be another couple hundred pounds of parts, tools, whatever, that we didn't account for when we were shock tuning the first time. As well as what I think um, is affected even more is the actual terrain. The, you know, there's people, there's spectators out there buzzing around, you know, and of course our race is the very last one that week, so we're following the... EMC, the UTVs, the trophy trucks, which really tear it up, and they're the day before our race. So the course is totally beat, um, you know, and that's when we're out here shock tuning, you know, there's no races right before we go and shock tune. So the terrain's, I, I mean, it's still gnarly, but it's it's a yeah. lot mellower than it is on yeah, race day. It's still the hammers, but yeah. so we're, it's just a progression, you know. Yeah. Um, it gives Jordan, he had made a bunch of changes to anti squad and springs and Toe. there was a bunch of things that you changed so it really gave us a chance to get out and test those and make sure that he was happy that he didn't lose anything yeah. right any speed any performance yeah. handling anything yeah. like Cornering, that speed, yeah. 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 so um yeah i mean on top of you know shock tuning guys that's the other thing you have to keep in mind is we have a lot more adjustment than just the shocks that could also be affecting the way the car is driving you know, so we could start messing with front toe, we can start messing with rear toe, we can adjust the anti-squat in the rear. There's there's a lot of other variables, Darren likes to call them. Um, yeah, and one of them that, that we are going to, or a couple of them that we are going to change is the torque converter, where, yep. where that comes in, yep. and the gear ratio. Gear ratio yeah. So those two things are going to, you know, when you're on the gas, how that car plants. So he'll have some adjustments to definitely make. Yeah, so it's it's... You know, we haven't re shock tuned that car uh, since before last hammers. Right. And and since last hammers, I had built a completely new rear suspension that Triton put together for us, um, which changed the motion ratios in the rear end. Um, it changed the anti-squat. It changed a bunch of stuff, you know, and we just, we just 
adjusted some tubes just to make it ride a little better, but it was nowhere near set up for that new rear suspension. Right. So this was the first time we've been back out with Fox uh, since all that, and it's night and day difference yeah. between where it was yeah. and where it is now. Yeah, so Mike did a good job. He did a great job. Yeah. And I'm, I'm super excited to be working with him. He's been doing a great job with all of our vehicles. Yeah, I mean, he just we, redid these. Redid these, yeah. yeah, they feel fantastic. <laughs> yeah. We were bopping along through the trail today, guys. <laughs> and if you've ever been in Moab, you know, there's those sections where, you know, it's like partial dirt, and then there's just that gnarly embedded rock, you know, we're just blasting through that stuff. It feels so good right and now. And yesterday we were in regular vehicles. Oh, and it was man. terrible. We were in like stock jails. Oh, I was in a I was in a Raptor. Yeah. You were in a, in a jail. jail. Yeah. And, and it had some aftermarket stuff yeah, on it. Yeah. Same with it, the Raptor. It's just no It's comparison. not the same. It's so, definitely not the same. Yeah. But no, we're having a blast out here. The weather's beautiful. Oh man. Couldn't ask for better weather. Yeah. But uh what are the questions? Uh, Follow-up question to the shock tuning. Jason Hanley asked, does the weather slash temperature change the way your shocks perform? Eh, they, they affect the way, they affect the performance when they're cold. You know, you're going to notice a difference when they're cold. They're going to feel um, harsh. Yeah and, yeah, and like, you know, like Eric Miller was describing it, you know, you have to, your, your race car is like your body. You're not just going to, not stretch and stuff before you go on a, a sprint you know you gotta stretch you gotta loosen up you gotta warm up before you can start running you know so um that was an interesting Good analogy, analogy the way yeah. you that. so yeah. it's the same thing you know you gotta cruise you gotta let the car warm up you know your your car is a yeah i i think what makes a bigger difference um on race day is you know if it had rained or is it significantly drier yeah. or um, you know, something that would affect how the car handles through the terrain. The terrain itself. Yes. Yeah. No, that's so also true. Th those are those yeah. are bigger factors uh, over the shocks. Yeah, totally. So on on race day, you know, Jordan's really going for not letting the car bottom out. When when the car bottoms out, and I don't care if it's the Terramoto or the race car, you're you're likelihood of damaging something, a wheel bearing, an A arm, Anything. a shock. Anything. You know, you're, you're, you've just exceeded the range of those parts, yeah. and you're just asking for something to break. And yeah. that's why, you know, only 20 cars finish that race, because everybody's out there exceeding the range by a long way. Yeah. So. Some people get lucky. <laughs> Some people get lucky. <laughs> I mean, not, not everybody. There's there's a lot of people that know exactly what they're doing, but it's uh, it's amazing that any cars finish that yes, race it really at is. all. It's, yeah, it it's insane. So, all right. Uh, Pamela Spirit asked why are you not carrying a spare oh uh, <laughs> spares and sway bars <laughs> <laughs> um look these days these tires are so good that um as long as you just have a plug kit um a lot of the time that's that's all you need uh but you know literally i can go for an entire year without even getting a flat in, in a normal wheeling condition um, you know, when we're racing, that's a that's a different kind of a circumstance. But um, you know, even like bopping around here, like we were doing today. Oh, we're I yeah. mean, we're we're flying on whatever six eight pounds, eight pounds of air, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's it's really just a non-issue when you've got a good quality tire. Um, your likelihood of damaging it is really low. Yeah. So and you just don't want the extra weight back. And there. I don't want the extra weight. That's a hundred and fifty or more pounds. And it's up high. Um, trust me, if you want to try something, take your spare off and and go around a corner, and you will notice the difference. Your your vehicle will handle completely different. And then go hit something off camber. Yeah, You're really. Yeah, yeah. Really where you're nice. driving, you know, and then you hit a bump, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> but that's the same reason I don't run hard doors or hard top. You know, you you shed six hundred. I mean, honestly, this this has got a thousand pounds off of it from a regular JK. So, you know, what do you? How, how much better do you think it's going to handle? Yeah. A lot. So, yeah. what do you got? Jaren Schiff. Tony goes a whole year without a flat? <laughs> <laughs> Normal driving conditions. Normal driving <laughs> conditions. Remember. I, pre I prefaced that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Oh, that's pretty funny. Fucking <laughs> Jaren. Yeah. I, I am hard on parts. Uh, we are all caught up on questions all right now. caught up, okay. 
Um, anything you want to add about being here and um, or your car? You know where where you're at. I know you you got a lot of work to do. Yeah, cars cars good. A lot of work ahead. Um, we're gonna start stripping it now. So everything's coming out. Motor, trans, transfer case, suspension. Everything's gonna go to Mag. Um, Explain what that is. So. Magnaflux, basically, guys, any welded steel part, or not even welded, just, just you know, like our stub shafts, shaft, yeah. yeah, axle shafts, we'll send it all out to what's called uh, get Magnafluxed. So they basically, uh, it's a liquid, they dip it in, they turn a black light on, and it basically enhances any even microscopic crack that any part has, whether it's in a weld and it's in the plate. You know, an axle shaft, it's very smooth, but they can catch any any yeah. imperfection and there's in a it. giant magnet involved in that which, yes which yes draws which it is what draws it into the crack yeah, yeah. so, so. Um, like any, if you have your wallet on you whatever was in your credit cards <laughs> it's gone <laughs> yeah you don't bring your cell phone no, your wallet yeah. not even near that just start wigging out yeah but, so, uh, but it's the same thing they do our transmission parts yeah. our engine parts yeah. uh, it's a very common practice and it's mostly used on aircraft parts yeah so almost any steel part, uh, suspension, drivetrain, or anything around any of those parts uh, goes to get mag. And you're going to replace a lot of these parts too. Right? A lot of it gets replaced. Yeah. Well, we're gonna we're gonna mag it. Everything that's on the car right now, guys, is going to be spares. So that's uh, going to be in the pits with the pit crews on race day. We're building an entire brand new suspension for the car um, here in the next month and a half ish you know and and everything that's brand new will be put on the car for the race so uh, but again the old stuff just because it's going into the pit doesn't mean we don't have to check it and make sure it's still that's good because right. that's the that would be like getting kicked in the nuts after you were already on the ground you, your car breaks your car you breaks put another part you on. put another part on then that part breaks you're like dude so uh yeah that's that's you know a simple no, inspection a simple thing yes. a simple thing so yes. uh yeah that's mm -hmm. that's that any other questions and and by the way um jordan that 350 miles he just ran out of the hammers at full tilt was on these exact same tires and no flats not not even a cut i mean no. they really look good so um yeah well, when we talk about having to carry now he does carry a spare on the race car um but that's uh, I'm even mixed on that, but you know. His old old four car did not have a spare. <laughs> so just so everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> he's all about the no spare. And and I'm about driving eighty five miles an hour and let it reinflate. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh Nana Jordan, says hi. Jordan just did that by the way. I just did yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> oh, hi Nana. And wants hi, to know Nana. if she can have Jordan's sweatshirt. Oh boy. She's gonna have to fight Sierra for it. Uh, <laughs> don't you have some old ones you can give back? To? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I got some. I got some shrunken ones. All I right. can toss to her. PM them later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Bobby Dylan, which do you prefer, aluminum or steel bumpers? Not even a question. Aluminum. aluminum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's got. You got to go for the weight, man. That's all. <laughs> got to go for the lightweight. And you know, again, these these are the same bumpers I ran at the hammers. I mean, you know, they they look great. So. Uh, John J, uh, not race car exciting, but while I have it behind you, I just installed the JKU cage. Can I see the rear speakers you're running? Um, right now I'm not running any rear speakers. Yeah, you gutted it. Um, it's, it's still all gutted from the race, but, um, I was going to put, um, some rear speakers right down here, but I noticed that some of my ambassador guys have, uh, speakers that, that tuck in. The boat style um, you ones. You know, like, uh, uh, not Craig, but, uh, I think Adam Pfeiffer has them Adam there. Has some. His are pretty big. Those are like the boat um, speakers. Um, I don't know. What, one of the did Grayson have those? Like, same, he has yeah, the same he has ones. Some, some JL audio ones. And, uh, Cord, that's who I was thinking oh. of. Cord, he's probably watching this broadcast. He can chime in and maybe, um, tell the guy where he got them and what, what he's got um, I did uh, my doors used to have uh, Focal speakers in I still have the Focals in the dash um, so yeah you know it's uh, you can see them there those are the tweeters but um, yeah there's uh, a lot of 
good stuff and and i'm running our mrv3 uh bluetooth yeah. you know unit so that that works pretty good too uh, Byron Roberts, summit machine joints or curry joints for replace, replacements on curry arms? Um, so the summit joints are fine, but they're bigger. So a lot of the brackets that we designed, we, that we didn't design them. I mean, you know, we designed them years ago and uh, we didn't take into account that larger size. So on a lot of our kits, only the, the curries fit. So um, just, just check. If you've got our kit, then you need to check that. If you've got somebody else's kit, maybe they'd fit. So, yeah. uh, Philip Harmon, hey Tony, any update on the aluminum radio plate for the JK? Um, we are working on that. I could use knowing what year your JK is because when we pulled that up, we found a big variety in size and shape based on whatever year JK. So if you could narrow that down for me, I'd appreciate that. Mm, caught up again. Um, how are we doing on time? Are we, um, time probably are we 35 minutes in? Yeah, 35 minutes in. Right. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. We haven't had any breakage so far of all the vehicles that we have out here. Um, we've got, uh, you know, Scott with the Trail Reaper is out here, and we were kind of tearing around with him today, and that was fun. Um, just, you know, because you're able to pick up the pace a little bit. Uh, if you're not familiar with the suspension like this, it actually works better the faster you go. I, I know that sounds like crazy talk to the average person because when you go faster in your Jeep, it just feels like it's ready to come apart. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it really does get better. And uh, that's why I'm always encouraging you guys to find me, get a ride. We at Trail Hero, we gave, I don't know, you know 20 plus rides. And I had like a 15 minute course set up where I would take you take them on a variety of you know street dirt all kinds of stuff and uh, everybody was totally amazed and uh, several people have already bought suspensions since then so yeah good stuff what um, else uh, Sam Walker update on the JL yeah so um, the JL where, where we're at right now is uh, it sits an inch and a half lower than the Terramoto it bumps 5.3 inches up, or right now I, I bump like 3.3 inches up. So so you get an addition. So not only does it sit lower, it bumps two inches further up. Um, so really, um, we're we're super excited. I mean, this is going to be um, not another level, like several levels up on this new suspension. And uh, of course, um, as soon as I've got more to show you guys, I'm I'm going to. But um, we're we're pretty excited. Uh, please understand the process. I, I hope everybody can be patient with us. Um, once all of the design work is done, we've got to make the parts. Then we have to build the fixtures in order to weld everything together. So um, a lot of this stuff takes time. So right now, you know, I'm, I'm hoping we make some pretty good progress this month and next month uh, to where um, we'll have something by the first of the year that, that uh, you know, we maybe can offer the public. So, uh, but we're getting close, I can tell you. You know, we've got uh, a thousand hours in on this design already so um, yeah it's it's really cool though there's there's no expense spared I can tell you that so. uh, Bobby Dillon will your aluminum LJ console fit a stock dash it will that's actually what it was designed for so we, we made it both ways right so we made it fit the stock dash and then uh, now we made our new dash fit the console so We've been able to kind of reverse engineer that, and um, I'm I'm really excited to see these dashes because we we did incorporate the knobs for the um, heater and air conditioning. So um, everything else we we ditched, but we did keep that. And uh, I, I don't know if you saw our YJ dash, but we had incorporated in passages for the defroster. So we did all the same stuff on the TJ LJ dash and. That looks really good too, and it really looks cool with that uh, iPad Mini in there. And then you get your choice to put a GPS in or uh, digital instrumentation. You know, kind of, kind of whatever uh, suits your build. So, pretty neat. Uh, Michael McGarity, did the Marine Corps close Johnson Valley to the public now through November 9th, or did that change? Uh, as far as I know, it is, it is closed. So, 
Um, that was another reason that we got out there and got all our testing in because we didn't want to get caught in that. So, uh, great question, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. Uh, o F Dow Williams, O5 TJ, any updates on increasing the wheelbase for stock TJs with a new GR package? Um, I mean, we've got, uh, we've got that brand new TJ tracer kit that Jeff Perkins put on his Jeep. Um, and he's got it stretched quite a bit. So, um, you know, the, the best thing to do would probably be to call in and talk to him, um, you know, tomorrow morning. He's a wealth of information when it comes to the, the TJ and getting it stretched and what to do. Um, he and I work together in developing that TJ tracer uh, belly pan and everything. So, um, yeah, talk to him and uh, he could probably uh, get you pointed in the direct, depending on how much stretch you want, um, get you pointed in the right direction. Yep. All right, caught back up. Yeah. All right. Um, well, if, if we're running out of questions, we're going to. Uh, wrap it up again we're here in moab utah we've been on the trail all day long since early this morning uh, we, we were out yesterday wheeling um, i drove a jl all day a jl rubicon all day and uh yeah we're just uh we're trying a bunch of different stuff we're um you know getting a bunch of our media stuff done and then of course later on this week is the great american crawl that uh they've got a facebook page and you can go over and get some information about what we're doing and uh, join us later this week so yeah good stuff so if we don't have any more questions then we're going to go ahead and wrap it up i uh, thank everybody for watching we will be back on thursday and uh, i'm sure by then i'll have a ton more information for you and uh, we will have done our first day of the great american crawl run so uh, thanks again for watching us and i uh, hope you guys all got out there and voted today so yeah, one more last question. Okay. Uh, the Sticky versus the Radio Baja Boss. So um, I can tell you, um, I, I know Jordan um, also witnessed this. Um, on, when we were out of Trail Hero, the, the difference between the regular DOT tire and the Sticky is almost nothing. Those, those tires seem to grip in every instance, you know, where I thought they were going to slip. They, they were biting, and uh, I know Jeff was impressed. I, I was certainly impressed. It, it was, uh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't think twice at all about getting the DOT. If, if you've got to drive on the street, get that DOT. Um, I've been driving these on the street, and uh, the rear ones are really showing some wear. I mean, it's kind of my driving style. These are the stickies. Right? Yeah, and these are the stickies, so, um, yeah. But, uh, you know, you do get that little bit of extra traction, but... I think for most people, the DOTs would be more than enough, for sure. So, all right. That helps. That's it. That's it. All right, guys. Guys and gals, <laughs> thanks for joining us, and we will see you on Thursday.